and welcome back. The police state is cracking down so hard on gun owners that you will have the police called on you if you have a tattoo of a firearm. For more on this, we have Victoria Montgomery of Open Carry, Texas. Thanks for joining us, Victoria. Thanks for having me. Okay, so I saw this article, police called over Maine man's gun tattoo, and I said, I know somebody who has a gun tattoo, Victoria Montgomery from Open Carry, Texas. So what are your thoughts about this? Well, as somebody who also has a gun tattoo, it, I definitely can see how overbearing the reaction was to this. I, I also have a, a pistol tattoo, but mine is on my hip rather than on my stomach. And um, like if I'm wearing a bikini or something, it might look as though I have a pistol tucked into my bikini. Um, <laughs> So I've never had anyone actually freak out and think, wow, that tattoo must be real. Because unless you go to like a multi-thousand dollar tattoo artist, it's going to be pretty obvious that there's not actually a gun in your waistband. But yeah, I have seen some really good ones. And, you know, it's just very interesting that this, um, this shows just how much further we have to come as Open Carry Texas and as uh, gun-friendly organizations. Because the narrative with the media is now to the public, if you see a gun, you need to uh, you need to call the police, no matter if it's uh, on somebody's T-shirt, like the kid in West Virginia who was mm -hmm. in eighth grade had a gun on his shirt and he he was arrested for it and suspended, or or the child who chewed a, a pop tart and yes. chewed the gun <laughs> chewed it, ate his pop tart the wrong way and got in trouble. How how does that even represent a, a, gun, a weapon? How can a pop tart even Simulate. Well, it, it goes to simulate the uh, the complete lunacy of the no of the no policy. You know, the right. no tolerance policy. If you even eat your pop tarts the wrong way, we've seen reports of the kids bringing in little army men or a T-shirt or, or a picture of their dad. You know, my dad served in the army and he's holding a gun. That's uh, that's against zero tolerance. Yeah, it's it's definitely gone too far. I mean, this man, uh, I believe his name was Michael Smith. You know, he's. Uh, Works the night shift. It's 10 in the morning. There's guys outside removing trees or whatever. It's loud. He needs sleep. I understand. I used to work the night shift, actually, as a 911 dispatcher. And, you know, he's tired, goes out there probably in pajama pants, not wearing a shirt. And they see the gun tattoo. He's not, like, having his hand near the gun tattoo as though he's going to magically draw this gun from his waistband that mm -hmm. is a tattoo. Nothing threatening, you know, not, I'm going to shoot you, nothing like that. Yet they still called the police. The police show up with actual guns, assault rifles, if you will. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, it makes me wonder, you know, I'm six months pregnant. And after I have my daughter, I, it's going to be in the summer. We plan on going to the beach and in a bikini. Yeah, you'll be able to see my gun tattoo. Does that mean that SWAT teams are going to descend on the beach because I have a tattoo of a gun visible on me? That's they just might. Don't give them any ideas. <laughs> And we saw the picture of the gentleman. He has the uh, the tattoo near his waistband. He also had tattoos of flames on his arms. If he has tattoos of flames, why don't you call the fire department? You know, right. <laughs> and the guy's on fire. Get get the guy some help. But it's just a complete lunacy, like you're talking about the kids with the pop tarts or the kids bringing the army men to school. Just any type of thing. We've seen reports of a gentleman who was on a bus talking about guns. You know, he'd gone to the, the gun show or whatever the week before. He's on, a, on the bus talking about his gun, and then they come and arrest this guy for talking about a gun in the United States of America. Right, and it's definitely interesting to see how we've come as a country where once, uh, you know, guns were respected and a gun was an everyday commonplace thing, which is what Open Carry Texas is trying to do. You know, our organization is trying to familiarize people with seeing a gun in the public, which is, again, why we want to get open carry of modern pistols passed in, in addition to uh, pre-1899 curio and antique firearms and replicas. Uh, well, I'm sorry, not firearms because they're not considered as firearms according to Texas Penal Code. They're considered weapons. But, you know, like we carry long rifles all day long and AK-47 and AR-15, whatever the case may be, people are no longer calling the police every time they see someone walking down the road with a rifle. So That's I, right. that shows that we have made progress. This past weekend on the anniversary of C.J. Grisham's arrest, we held a, a recreation of that hike and hiked 10 miles the route that he and his son were planning on hiking for his son's merit badge. All of us had rifles, including myself, and we walked the 10 miles in the rain on very busy highways and roads, and a lot of people saw us, yet 
Nobody called the police. The now let's uh, let's backtrack a little bit for the people who may not be familiar with the case of C.J. Grisham. He is a military, well, still active duty. Almost said veteran. He's still active duty. Uh, he's out hiking with his son. He's in an area where there's a lot of wild game. Uh, he had his firearm on him for protection to protect himself and his son. He encounters a police officer. The police officer completely freaks out, confiscates his weapon. He goes to trial, as Mr. Grisham does, and I believe he was found guilty of what was the charge they uh, trumped up on him. Interfering with a police officer's duties. Yeah. So because uh, he says I'm a uh, I'm a citizen in the United States of America and I don't want to turn over my property. Now he's a criminal in the eyes of the law. So uh, Victoria, tell us about some of the more more recent things that have been going on. I know you guys have some battles with DPS. Where's that at? Texas DPS. Well, Texas DPS has been hassling us uh, at the Austin State Capitol. Again, there's apparently some administrative code which doesn't allow you to come on to the Capitol property with a long rifle or a pre-1899 black powder replica or antique, which is interesting because you can walk inside of the Capitol building with your concealed carry handgun mm -hmm. if you have the CHL. However, I can't walk around the Capitol lawn, for example, with a black powder pistol um, in my holster, or even a toy one for that matter. C.J. Grisham was arrested again on Veterans Day of all days. We had a lot of veterans down there, and he had um, a pretty obvious toy black powder pistol yes. in a holster. I mean, it, it was plastic. It was very easy to tell. Yet DPS surrounded him, told him he needed to leave with his weapon. He said, I don't have a weapon. And so then they arrested him for public trespassing and resisting because he didn't like the way his arm was almost torn off by the uh, officers. Yeah, and it's completely ridiculous because we even saw the, the situation. I believe the gentleman's name was Gary Webb, the gentleman in the wheelchair who was arrested. He was actually concealing his firearm, but then he shifted his weight in his wheelchair and the officer saw his firearm and arrested a man in a wheelchair. And I personally, uh, just me myself, at the Capitol have seen four individuals arrested, Terry Holcomb, AJ, Justin, you know them, and also Mr. Webb. And these are just the people I've personally witnessed on the, some of the tracks I've made out there. So uh, Victoria, in our time left, tell us what's next for Open Carry Texas and how we can keep up with your organization. Well, on March 30th, we are going to be having a walk in Garland in response to apparently someone was falsely arrested there. And we're also going to be doing a walk just to raise awareness in Harker Heights, Texas, um, outside of Colleen, with a pretty busy intersection. So we're going to get a lot of attention out there. On April 5th, I believe we're going to be having a rally in Alvin, Texas. And then on April 11th, we're going to be having a gun rally here in Temple, Texas for the opening of the Libertarian Party Convention. So definitely there's lots of walks going on. You can also check on opencarrytexas.org or our Facebook page, uh, Open Carry Texas. Again, we have walks basically every week all over. We have many chapters all over the state. I mean, we have a big group down in the Rio Grande Valley. We have a big group in Dallas, Corpus Christi, all over the place. So there's definitely a lot of ways to get involved and show your support with the Second Amendment and open carry in general, if you so choose. All right, Victoria. I can see your dog right there. He's, he's ready for you to go. Victoria Montgomery, Open Carry Texas, thank you for your time. Thank you.